Hey guys, it's Caroline over at V Technologies. We are just getting um, everybody in on the webinar and we'll be starting in a few minutes. Thanks. Hey again, it's Caroline. Seems like we still have people rolling in, but I think before we start, I'm just going to go through a few housekeeping pieces. Um, this will be recorded, so you'll receive an email with a link to the recording after the webinar in case you need to forward it to some other individuals on your team or you want to take a look again. And all participants will be muted, um, but please feel free to use the question pane on your control panel to ask questions as the presentation and demos go through, and then we'll try to get to those at the end. So today we have a um, collaborative webinar. Um, Simon Volta, our Director of Sales over at V Technologies, um, which is a developer of the Starship shipping application, and Dakota May, Sales Manager over at Activate. Um, they're the order and inventory management software that really just extends the standard um, QuickBooks functionality. Um, both of them will be speaking to the solutions and also showing us a workflow of how the solutions can work together to help you streamline the entire supply chain. So with that, I'm going to send it over to Simon to start the webinar. Thanks, Simon. Thank you, Caroline, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Caroline mentioned, my name is Simon Volt. I'm the Director of Sales here at V Technologies. Um, I am joined by Dakota May uh, from Activate, uh, who uh, is going to be taking us through a um, demonstration of the Activate software and how Starship uh, could can integrate with the platform itself. Um, we're extremely, extremely excited, as this is our first collaborative webinar with the folks at Activate here from the V Technology side. And I know we have a kind of a mixed group of customers from Activate as well as V Technology. So I'm gonna kind of open it up with kind of what we're gonna get into today speaking of. <clears throat> so I'm gonna give everyone a quick introduction of who we are for those of you who don't know who V Technologies is. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the differences between Shipgear and Starship, which is, are the two products that we offer. Um, I know we have some Shipgear users on the line today. So I'll kind of talk a little high level of the differences you're going to see in the Starship application. And then we'll talk a little bit about the post office savings that you can um, benefit from by using the Starship application uh, and what that could mean to you on your overall bottom line. And then I'll turn it over to Dakota, who will kind of walk us through um, a little bit about the Activate inventory software, as well as the Starship workflow that you can expect to see. And then we'll get into the demonstration of the two different applications and we'll take the uh, questions and answers uh, at the end. So a little bit about who we are. Um, we are located here in Cheshire, Connecticut. Uh, we have a staff of approximately 40 um, folks who work here uh, between sales support, uh, QA, and development. So we're all located in one building. We've been in business since 1987. Um, Starship itself has been around since 1989 um, and been developing um, the enhancements ever since. Uh, we have about 10,000 uh, customers across the country currently using our applications. 
Uh, so again, we're well known um, and es established in the shipping industry itself. <clears throat> as far as a little bit of a comparison of what you can expect to see in Starship, um, again, this goes for our ship gear users who might be on a call today, but as well as the Activate customers who are on the phone um, and might not know what Starship can do. But really a couple of the main uh, key points I like to make here is the user interface you're gonna see is a multi-mode, multi-carrier signal platform. So what that really means is you don't have to use a world ship application or ship manager application any longer. You'll use the Starship application, which will combine all of your carriers into one platform. Um, you'll have line item integration and you'll see that come in the demo today um, in which basically you'll have all of your line items from Activate be moved into the Starship application for you to be allowed to package those as you see fit. Um, obviously, Starship works with the Activate inventory software, where Shipgear is not um, capable of doing that. The one key feature of Starship is the rate shopping, the ability to see all of your carriers inside of one um, screen versus having to go to multiple screens or multiple workstations to pull your different um, rates from different carriers. Batch processing, for those of you who are on here um, who might be doing um, e-commerce or just large amounts of orders, and have the ability to batch process, we can handle that through the Starship application in itself. We won't get really into that today. However, if it's a part of your workflow, please reach out and we can talk about that a little further. Um, EDI, we also support uh, different workflows when it comes to EDI um, types of shipments. So again, we're not gonna you know, touch on that much at all today, but again, I wanted to mention that Starship does have the capabilities of working with different EDI providers uh, along with the Activate software. <clears throat> E-commerce extensions, um, the workflow with Activate, um, if you do work with e-commerce carts such as Shopify, Magento, WooCommerce, et cetera, um, we do have the capabilities of writing back to those carts, but because the Activate platform allows for that workflow to happen through their software, um, it would be pretty seamless where you would need our extension piece um, to, uh, to access that information. <clears throat> and then last but not least, you do have capabilities of accessing our um, USPS discounted rates. Um, so for those of you who might be shipping light weights um, or residential type of shipping, um, you can maybe benefit from, save, from some savings by accessing those rates that we offer through the Starship application. <clears throat> and then this is a slide. So we have about two di uh, dozen different carrier integrations today between LTL as well as Parcel. So if you do have an LTL uh, workflow in your uh, environment, um, we're not gonna really talk much on that today. We're gonna hi highlight the workflow with the parcel carriers today. Um, but if you do have LTL, I did wanna have this up here. Let's talk about that a little further, how we can kind of integrate your LTL carriers into the mix um, and make that um, process automated for you. <clears throat> when it comes to the post office, what really to be on the lookout for? When should you really kind of take advantage of the discounts that we offer? So really, you know, you want to be looking out for packages that you're shipping that are 20 pounds and under, um, that have low values associated to them. Um, zones one through four um, is where you're going to see the biggest types of savings, you know, uh, for those particular shipments, as well as residential charges. So if you're highly, um, you know, if you, you, you a large percentage of your shipments are residential. This is a great way to save, you know, on those residential surcharges that the um, carriers such as UPS or FedEx might be, you know, charging you today. Same with the delivery or surcharges that apply. That's not going to be applicable in the USPS environment as well as dimensional weight. And if you're also shipping through an e-commerce, um, you know, type of platform um, and where you're trying to offer maybe a free shipping option, um, post office could be a great way to do that where you don't have these additional fees that would be applicable. Some of the value-added benefits of Starship are basically our latest release uh, that we just released a couple weeks ago um, offers you that visibility into the USPS um, demo rates so you don't necessarily need to have um, a, an account set up um, through Starship to be able to see what those discounts will be um, uh, provided to you. So we're giving that access up front for you to kind of run some analytics of your own to kind of see if it would make sense to take advantage of those rates moving forward. <clears throat> we also work with a third party company um, that has, you know, the ability to run a thorough analysis of your UPS and FedEx billing history 
um, and which basically can provide you with what types of shipments that you could move potentially to say priority mail over FedEx ground or Fed, um, UPS ground type of shipping and kind of give you a very thorough analysis of potential savings on an annual basis. And then obviously having that single platform to really produce all of these types of labels rather than having separate systems throughout your operation. So this is just one example I wanted to take everyone through to kind of visualize what I've been referring to. So when we talk about dimensional weight um, and where the post office potentially could help you save some money, um, this is an example here where we have a teddy bear that would be shipping from New York to California. Um, basically where the teddy bear weighs up, you know, 20 ounces, and that's gonna be rounded up to two pounds with FedEx or UPS <clears throat> based on this 12 by 10 by six corrugated box that it's gonna be put into. So you can kind of see here with basically the um, scenario we have put in front of you. So you have actual weight of two pounds um, with the post office, dimensional weight, there is no dimensional weight with the post office, so you have two pounds. Your total charges for that shipping would be 997, utilizing the rates provided to you through Starship. Whereas a FedEx or UPS, you can see the um, dimensional weight would be five or six pounds. Um, and then the rates there, what you see is 1358 and 1305. There's just a base rate. And then when you tack on fuel surcharge and residential fees, you can kind of see where the, the price jumps up dramatically of what you might be paying. So again, just to kind of highlight what, you know, the post office could potentially do for your overall uh, bottom line savings. <clears throat> so now I'm going to turn it over to Dakota and he'll kind of talk us, you know, through the Activate uh, platform as well as the Starship workflow. Dakota? Thanks, Simon. Uh, you, you touched on um, quite a few points that are, in my opinion, very valuable to a lot of clients that we continuously talk to. And uh, when they come to us, they have questions about fulfillment, getting into shipping, um, that, that actually will match up really well with Activate. Uh, that takes me kind of directly into uh, talking about the Activate platform. Uh, so I'll actually start with posing um, some questions to kind of get those that are out there that are on QuickBooks right now kind of pointed in the right direction of, you know, what is Activate and, and when would Activate be, you know, the right solution for me or for our company. Um, so when you're thinking about Activate, Activate is a solution that integrates with QuickBooks. We build upon some of the standard features that you find in QuickBooks. Uh, some things if, if you're asking yourself or maybe you continually run into situations where QuickBooks just doesn't offer enough of um, a feature set from an operational standpoint, uh, from inventory standpoint, from order fulfillment, that's where Activate typically steps in and offers those additional features, kind of builds upon those, uh, gives you more advanced features to streamline, allow you to be more efficient uh, from an order standpoint, from an order fulfillment from an inventory control, from purchasing standpoint, kind of all across the board from an, um, when we think of operations. Now, when we talk about what is Activate, uh, I usually position it as inventory control and order fulfillment, and then uh, connect that with QuickBooks, kind of giving you a small business ERP. So when we actually look at the, you can see here on this um, screen, you actually see several uh, value points or features that Activate offers that uh, really build upon the feature set that QuickBooks um, typically doesn't get too far into. Uh, gets us into things like multi-warehouse, um, uh, uh, getting into landed cost, lot serial uh, control, uh, manufacturing. Uh, typically, there, there, there are some of those in QuickBooks, but um, there are just limitations. And, and if you uh, do use QuickBooks for those, you might be very aware of those limitations. Um, now, Activate also builds into order fulfillment, uh, giving you more control over your order fulfillment process from the time those orders come in from your different channels to um, going through the process of picking, packing, shipping, uh, and delivering um, an invoice to the customer, which then takes us directly into, you know, how does QuickBooks fit into this, this um, the picture? So. Activate, while it does have a lot of operational features, it's not a replacement for QuickBooks in its entirety. Activate just takes over the operations, inventory, order processing, and purchasing. QuickBooks still does what it does best, which is the financials, accounts receivable, accounts payable, checkbook, payroll, and, and the financial side of the business. Now, what this presents us is 
uh, the uh, ability for many businesses to stick with what they're doing on a financial level. Many times that's not the issue. Many times you have a lot of history, you don't wanna lose that. It's, it's very vital information um, when you wanna move forward and be successful in your business. So rather than reinventing the wheel and uh, looking for a completely new solution uh, where you'd have to leave QuickBooks, we just fill in those gaps on the operational side and allow you to continue using QuickBooks for financial bookkeeping. Now, there's a couple of things I'll point out about our integration with QuickBooks before I move into uh, more order processing. So Activate has a bi-directional integration with QuickBooks, uh, keeps both systems fully in sync, and, and it eliminates any double entry or manual work between the two systems. So it, it makes that a very clean uh, integration uh, and, and allows you to function within one or both systems as necessary and not necessarily have to do a lot of manual upkeep in order to, to maintain two uh, very different systems. This offers enhanced security. Um, it kind of comes back to, you know, think about the number of hands in QuickBooks. If you're using it for order processing or inventory control, that means all of your order processing and inventory control employees are having to access QuickBooks. Not always an ideal environment. So. Activate removes those users into a different system, and then now you just have more um, uh, more specific users that are just managing the accounting, uh, accounts receivable, accounts payable, uh, and then maybe those C-level executives that are that are wanting to see that information at an at analytical um, standpoint. It's actually there. We go. Okay. So getting into talking about uh, order processing. So Activate offers multi-channel um, feature capability. And, and you can see here in this graphic, the idea that Activate supports EDI, and we support many different uh, EDI service providers. Uh, but that's one channel that you might get orders. Uh, we also support e-commerce. Many clients come to us with m most often more than one platform, uh, maybe Amazon, maybe eBay, uh, maybe they also have their own website through Shopify, Magento, WooCommerce, or, or many other very popular platforms. Um, and then uh, all the while, you still may be entering orders in directly. Maybe you have your own sales team, so you need the ability to not only have those orders be coming in and, and uh, managed from a fulfillment standpoint, but you also need that order entry um, uh, for direct entry, manual entry, or possibly importing orders in. So what Activate does is it allows you to streamline each of these channels into one place. Uh, rather than jumping into different portals and kind of looking at, okay, what are my EDI orders and have I fulfilled these, and then separately looking at e-commerce, and, and not really seeing it all in one big picture, um, act, uh, which can be very frustrating if, if you're doing it that way. So Activate pulls that in, lets you see it in a single um, a single system uh, in one place so that you can manage and then streamline move orders in batch from uh, from entry to uh, to their corresponding location they're supposed to go to. So whether you have uh, fulfillment stations or multiple fulfillment stations, depending on the circumstances, that's where streamlining the multiple, multiple channels can really um, allow for better performance, more um, a more streamlined approach to fulfillment. There we go. So once those orders are in, you start to think about, okay, what do I do with these orders? And what Activate does and does really well is it helps you route orders depending on different uh, criteria. Uh, orders coming in from EDI may have different requirements on the fulfillment path than orders from e-commerce. And what we also talk about when we're dealing with EDI and e-commerce is volume. So when you have high volume with very specific criteria, having a well-defined workflow is very important. So activate through, and in this example, I'm, I'm actually showing the order manager, allows you to actually create filters specific to certain um, types of orders based on that criteria. So if you need to manage your EDI orders independent of your e-commerce orders, or maybe you wanna even be more specific than that, you wanna do a specific uh, customer within EDI that is maybe your primary. Let's say in this example, you can see Target and Walmart as the customer in, in one of those columns. Let's say Walmart, you do 10 times as much um, fulfillment to than any other customer. Maybe you wanna really highlight them. So Activate really allows you to zone in through uh, our order manager, create defined workflows for very specific information. And that way you can always know what's going on, where you're at with those orders so that you can 
um, uh, fulfill them on time uh, accurately and, and fill in those gaps and make sure you're not missing anything. Now, there are other features with Activate. With EDI comes more requirements regarding the way you package something, identifying how did you package it, uh, what goes into what carton, things like that. Now, I'm not gonna get too much into that, but I did wanna speak to Activate does have tools and features that, that um, specifically allow you to identify and package and then deliver that information back to um, your, your customer. Uh, now, the reason why I wanted to bring this up specifically is Starship actually does a fantastic job of also um, taking that information from an EDI standpoint. We call them shipments as you're, as you're putting together shipments for EDI for your big box retailers, um, and then you can actually send those shipments directly in. So not only do, does the integration between Activate and Starship support just order by order uh, management and fulfillment, it also does support those more complex shipments where you might have many different orders being grouped together. Now, Activate also does support uh, mobile in the warehouse, and that gets more into the, the workflow going from a standpoint of when you've identified an order needs to be fulfilled, and we now need to get that out into the, the warehouse to, to, to move forward with that, that pick. Um, mobile can definitely help with streamlining and um, increasing accuracy. So our, our mobile allows you to actively, no downloading, it's all in real time, you can actually open up a pick, you can scan items, it'll actually give you uh, direct feedback if it's the right item, if it's the right quantity, things like that. So you can be very, very accurate um, as to how you're picking something and what you still have to go. Um, so, so definitely something to kind of consider there. And if you wanna learn more about that, uh, that aspect, or if you wanna see a demonstration, it's definitely something that we can do offline. Uh, feel free to reach out to us on that. Now, when we're talking about the, the Starship, um, you know, when does information from Activate go into Starship? Once an order is created, you will be able to access that order within Starship. It's, a, it's all on the back end, so it's actually very, very seamless and very easy to move information from Activate into Starship. Now, you'll still go through your defined workflow, but when it gets into that, that shipping workstation in the warehouse, when you're ready to generate those, uh, the, the shipment details or, or process a shipment, go through, um, you know, uh, and understand how you're going to ship it, which um, logistics company you're going to work with, um, you know, that information will be ready to go. There is no delay there. It's, it's going to be a, a very quick and easy process. And that kind of leads me into, before we actually get into the workflow of, of how that information uh, goes from Activate and then how it's returned, is I'm going to highlight two things that, that, you know, I hear most often from clients um, when they are, uh, do whether it's high volume shipments or um, it just is very important from a standpoint of, of cost of shipping as a part of their business. So two things I hear most often are, you know, clients that use USPS, UPS, and FedEx. Uh, of course, yes, there are solutions that, you know, like uh, WorldShip and, and Ship Manager for FedEx and, and then Indicia and things like that. But what they all do, they're all separate applications that you have to, you can jump in and out of, which is fine sometimes, but when you have a single solution that you can actually jump into to actually see each one, almost do like a rate quote, uh, a rate uh, shopping, and you're wanting to look at the different rates to find and be the most efficient as a part of your shipping, um, this is what I hear most often and why Starship, why we actually are very excited about this integration, uh, because this actually gives our clients that capability of doing that rate shopping. Um, not only that, Activate is a distribution management system. So when you're dealing with EDI, uh, big box retailers, and you're distributing product uh, or e-commerce, and you're fulfilling a lot of orders, um, sometimes when you're dealing with those larger orders that are being fulfilled to distributors or big box retailers or, or uh, dealers and, and, and the like, um, it, we get into LTL. Now, um, as Simon said, we're not necessarily going to show um, much from a demo standpoint on LTL, but it is important to point out, um, historically, without our integration with Starship, our customers have had to manage that manually. So if they are dealing with an LTL um, company, they have to go out and give that information um, a little bit more manual. It's not direct. Now, with Starship's direct integration and ability to communicate with many different LTL companies, that's another big gap that, that can really be filled uh, you know, during that fulfillment stage, especially for distributors. Now, when information is processed and completed um, 
as, as Simon will de um, demonstrate here uh, in, in a few moments, uh, that information does come back to activate once it's completed. So uh, we actually bring back, and it, sometimes it can be multiple package data. And what I mean by that is if you have um, uh, a, a large order that may have multiple uh, shipments or multiple um, uh, you know, tracking information, you know, it's going to be delivered independently. Um, that is something that Activate does support on the return of information back from Starship. So you will actually be able to see independent shipments as it relates to a single order or a single shipment for EDI. Um, tracking information does flow there as well. Uh, now, I know, Simon, you'll mention this uh, talking about delivering tracking information directly out of um, Starship back to um, uh, the customer. Uh, but Activate does, because it pulls that tracking information in, because we work with e-commerce, we also will push that information back up to an e-commerce site. And with that, that means that the client's going to have several different ways they can access that information, whether they get in an email or they actually log back in to see it on, uh, on, their, uh, on the e-commerce site where they originally placed their order. And of course, we pull in shipping charges, which is also crucial as you are looking to become more efficient uh, and you're trying to identify what your costs are, uh, and what your um, margins are on an order by order basis. Activate does give you a lot of information to, to track that report on. And then because we're gathering that information from Starship, uh, it, it allows you one more step in that direction of being more um, uh, a little bit more analytical or strategic in your decision making on how you approach um, shipping and, and the different carriers that you work with. And of course, with our integration to QuickBooks, um, once Activate has that information, we want to invoice it and activate. That then gets it ready to be delivered to QuickBooks. As a part of that delivery, we can also automate emails going out with that invoice attached as a PDF, make that a very simple and easy process. Um, although you can also still send invoices out of QuickBooks, um, that is something that Activate also supports and tracks as a part of that single transaction for that order. Uh, and then, of course, once you do create those invoices, we get that ready as part of our sync with QuickBooks so that then you have that invoice, as I mentioned, and kind of led into um, that you'd have the ability to, to view that invoice, whether it's paid or if you need to bill uh, the customer for that invoice, all of that would still be fully accessible from QuickBooks. And Simon, I'll go ahead and uh, I guess at this point, if we want to jump into the, the demo and I'll um, be able to, to demonstrate a few things inside of Activate. Perfect. Okay, so what we want to do here is a part of this demo. So this is, um, so what I'm looking at is just the standard Activate um, application. And what we'll do is I'm going to create an order. And from that, um, I will uh, be able to simulate that transfer of information from that order into, um, into, into Starship. So let's see, it looks like, is it loading? Sorry, Dakota. There we go. Perfect. There we go. It's back up. Cool. Um, it looked like maybe uh, GoToMeeting had a little bit of a delay there. So the first thing, like I said, I will open up a sales order. Now, as I said, getting information into Starship is as simple as once I've created the order and saved it. Um, but um, and then and then um, Simon can demonstrate how you access that from their interface, but it, it, um, it is very simple. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk us through the creation of a sales order. Again, if you're dealing with EDI or e-commerce, these orders would auto-populate based on in that integration. So you're not necessarily manually creating orders for those channels. However, if you do manual entry uh, or if you're going to be updating orders, you may use this interface for order entry. So the first thing I want to do is identify my customer. I'm going to use Adams and Company. It's a little slow. I know we're using a, a VM, so it's all right. Once that's up, there we go. Now, when I pull a customer record, now Activate does have a full set of customer records for your customers, so it does store that information. It will auto-populate everything that you need related to that customer. It could be the branch that you're going to be um, handling sales out of. It could be uh, how you're going to normally ship for that customer. And in this case, what we're doing is UPS ground, so that may be the standard method that we would uh, want to ship 
via, of course, we have, um, and, and this is something that we can work with when we're setting up the integration between Activate and Starship is determining what those services should be, uh, what that list should be. Um, now, once we have all of that information that auto-populates, you've made adjustments, you can also add products. So I can either hit the three-dotted box here, I can also hit F4 on my keyboard for quick access into our product catalog, uh, and that's going to allow me to pull up. Now, I'm going to add three items to this sales order. So I'm going to simulate several different ways you can pull up an item. As I type in the B10, it's going to narrow down my selection and find it. I don't have to hit refresh or anything like that. And then I hit enter, and it allows me to, to add that product. Now, it's going to do a return as well and pop up a product note. So if I have a, a unique piece of information related to adding that product. Now I can also just type in the product too. I don't necessarily have to go searching for it. If I know that ID, I can do that. We do support multiple unit, multiple IDs as well. So if you have a customer ID, if you have a, a vendor ID or just an alternate or a UPC, or if you're going to scan a barcode, a tethered, you, uh, you know, like your mouse would be a tethered scanner to your computer or laptop, it can support that as well in this interface. Now I'm going to add the B10. It also has a product pop-up note. And then we're going to add one more. So I'm going to do the pH 40 in this example. Okay. Now, a couple of things. Um, as a part of how we ensure that information gets into um, Starship properly, first off, as a part of the fulfillment, we always want to make sure that items are scheduled. So as you can identify, we have a number of ordered items here. That's how much the customers requested. Scheduled versus back order tells us whether or not we actually have it available in our designated warehouse we're fulfilling out of. And right now I have it set for my Fort Worth warehouse. Um, so that, that would be the example here of this, actual, this order actually can move forward um, and we can fulfill it. Now, there's different ways we can fulfill out of Activate. And of course, if you want to do it more of a, you know, one order at a time, uh, if that makes sense, you can definitely come up here and generate documents, print the order, email it, print the pick ticket, email it, um, print a packing list, shipping label. And the shipping label would not necessarily be like a, like a UPS or FedEx or um, other type of label. We're just talking about a standard label for that, that shipment. Uh, from an operational level, but those documents can be generated out of Activate directly from the order. However, my recommendation, especially if you're dealing with high volume, is to use, as I mentioned earlier, our order manager. So let me open this up. And as I mentioned earlier, the order manager is sort of that ultimate place to manage the process, whether we're talking about uh, a unique um, uh, process for a specific customer or a specific channel, or if, if it makes sense, maybe you do everything, uh, you just want to look at all orders um, together, um, you can definitely do that. So as this actually populates, uh, we will look at what these buttons do. There we go. Now, these are different filters. So right now it's populating, you know, um, in this case, I'm looking at quotes, open orders, booked orders, back orders, scheduled orders. So you always have uh, your eye on what's going on with your orders and knowing, okay, where am I with this fulfillment? Now, this is gonna look at more general filters across uh, orders. When we're looking at specific fulfillment, I might actually have a view, and we call these bars, but if you look at the specific bar for workflow statuses, and then when we actually set up those and configure them when we're setting up your system, you can actually tailor that workflow to flow as, as you would have it in your warehouse, whether we have orders that are going to be ready to pick, to pick in progress, to pick on hold, and so on. Now, what I want to do is simulate an order going through these stages. So I'm actually going to adjust this. Now, um, I'm going to update this so it actually does show up. Uh, we're going to do ready to pick. There's a couple of ways I could have done that, but I'm since I have access to it, I'm going to do that here. So I'll do... Uh, now we're looking at A1537C is the order number. So when uh, we actually look at this and hit refresh, now you'll see that that order hits ready to pick. So any number of orders that are hitting that status, um, you can, um, you'll be able to see them in those uh, specific filters. And then based on that information, now if we were looking at more than just one order here, I could auto select all of them at the same time and then I can go through a set of functions for actions, whether I want to schedule orders, unschedule them, print the order, uh, print the pick tickets, uh, possibly go down um, and change the workflow status 
things like that. If I'm using a mobile device in the warehouse, these can auto update based on the function of what's going on on the, on the, the mobile device. So if I open up a specific order, if I were to open up this pick on a mobile device in the warehouse, it would automatically shift to pick in progress. And when I complete that pick, it's going to move in, into the picked stage. Um, so as it goes through those stations in your warehouse, if that's your setup, then eventually you'll have a number of orders that, that will fit into a certain filter or certain criteria. And at that point, you can, um, th th we may shift gears and you may actually want to jump into um, uh, Starship to, to actually handle that order from a uh, standpoint of generating the, the shipping label uh, for the specific carrier you're gonna be working with. Um, now what I will do, I'll go ahead and I don't necessarily have to change the workflow, but I can simulate the idea of, let's say it did get picked. Um, now that order would shift and you'd see it picked Again, that would have been automated if you were using a mobile device. At this point, if, you're, if your next step is to package and ship, this is where you may be at that shipping workstation. You may not necessarily have activated at that shipping workstation. It's not needed. It's something that um, through our communication pathway with Starship, that station may only need to have Starship for generating those labels. And at this point, we would hand off to uh, Simon and he can demonstrate how to access this A15370. <clears throat> Perfect, thank you, Dakota. Um, I'm just gonna make one slight change because sure. I wanna um, make sure we have uh, the correct ad shipping address just to demonstrate here. Um, just wanna make this so we can properly show this guy here. Hit the, hit the, uh, Let's do the edit button here. Oh, here we go. Go. type it in here. It, um, if you were Sorry. to, uh, we, we leave that kind of like QuickBooks, it's a copy and paste and it'll identify specifically how that address is supposed to be parsed. So. Okay, there, there we go, cool. Awesome. Oops. And now if you hit save, it'll, it'll retain that information. Oh, yeah. That's company. Perfect. There we go. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So, um, as Dakota mentioned, so this is where Starship is going to pick up the process. Once you have your order picked um, inside of Activate, we're going to basically open up uh, Starship here. So, I'm just going to kind of minimize this here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so here's basically um, what the Starship user interface is going to look like. Um, so we have a couple different, and Dakota touched on it a little bit, um, but we have two source documents that we can work with the Activate interface on. The first one being orders, which is going to be demonstrated today based off of a typical sales order, bringing in those specific line items that Dakota was speaking of earlier. And then the second one is your shipment. So this is where we would take advantage of the packaging manager inside of Activate, um, and then basically have you package inside of Activate, and we would pull that shipment information, however you packaged it inside of the interface there. So because we're gonna stay on orders, <clears throat> we'll stay here. Um, we have a couple different ways. If you have your pick ticket barcoded um, on the Activate side, we could use a wedge type scanner to scan that uh, sales order in to Starship. You could type it into this field if you know it, or you could use our lookup window here. By doing that, we just go find that order we were just talking about, A1537T. A 50, A we basically go ahead and process that, load that document into Starship. So everything from your ship via that you saw there before with UPS Ground, um, billing your account number as a default. Uh, we can bill, if you do have uh, drop ships or bill third party situations, we can map those accordingly as well. So that way we can bring in the appropriate third party account information for the specified carrier. Um, so you don't need to manually uh, do that inside of Starship. And then obviously the default will be always you as a sender. And then the recipient, we're basically mapping over the ship to information that we just saw. On the, basically on the import, we're also gonna do an address validation. We're gonna verify the street address as being correct, as well as the, um, the secondary check we're gonna do 
is verifying a commercial versus residential location to avoid those types of address corrections that you might see in your typical invoices today. So this address coming in, that's what this green checkbox represents here, that this is a verified commercial location. Down at the bottom, <clears throat> we have basically our line items that Dakota was just referring to earlier. Um, so we have the three specific line items that came in um, with its appropriate weight um, tied to them. Um, and basically I have it defaulted being put in and placed into one box, my 10 anchor box. This 10 anchor box you'll notice has already been saved in our packaging database with its appropriate dimensions and its appropriate weight. Um, so therefore you don't have to do anything. However, if you did want to come in here and say, you know what, I can't use my 10 anchor box, you could choose from any one of your saved packaging types from this field here or have it defaulted to go into a different type of box. If you need to add a secondary box, it's as simple as basically adding a box and creating a secondary box where now you'll have two boxes. You could simply type in the dimensions you know, of that box if they weren't already there, or you could also move um, typical line items. You could do a drag and drop of just that simple. So now I have two items in one, one item in another, and now I can print my you know, shipping labels based on you know, having two boxes. Uh, one of the key features I was talking about a little earlier was the rate shop functionality within uh, Starship. So it's automatically going to default to your ship via how you brought the order in, which was UPS ground. However, if I want to see my negotiated rates I have with all my licensed carriers, I can simply hit shop all. This is basically going to go out and basically pull in all my negotiated rates um, with the individual carriers. It's also going to show you what your discounted rate is going to be through the post office that you'll have as a Starship user that we provide to you. So this scenario that will come in here, um, as it pulls in all the rates, you'll see here you can sort this lowest to highest. <clears throat> so you'll notice my priority mail rate, for instance, is $16.04 versus my UPS ground rate being $22.14. So I'm going to save about $6 on the shipment. I'm also going to get the return for delivery um, expectations. When is it expected to deliver with the post office? That's Friday if it were to ship today versus, say, UPS, that's Tuesday. So this is sort of a uh, no-brainer for me as a, as a shipper or, you know, decision maker that says, you know, I want to save myself $6 and get there a few days faster. It's as simple as clicking this purple box, which will transition over to your post office uh, account and basically be able to ship your priority mail labels at that point in time. You don't need to re-import the whole order all over again. Um, you can just continue and process. For this example, I'm going to leave it as UPS um, and process this um, with it being that. So you can hit either F5 or the icon up top here. And this will go out and print basically your two shipping labels for the two boxes. We developed something in-house internally here called a um, smart label. It's a basically an eight and a half by 11 document. This being a four by six die cut um, label where you can basically peel off and stick onto your box. The other side becomes your packing list. If you choose to have that printed, it's optional, it's not required. You could also print this to a thermal as well as your packing list to a thermal printer if you choose to do that as well. This is just gonna tell you which items are in which package. We also have something called a shipment packing list that would be one packing list for the entire shipment that's available as well. <clears throat> so you'll get one for each box on this particular example, and now you're done. Now you can move on to your next order. The write back of the tracking and cost has written back into Activate for the, that shipment. However, before I get over to, um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna turn that over to Dakota um, where he can kind of actually take uh, you through the uh, Activate um, Thinking with QuickBooks, but also show you the write back that occurred in the Activate platform. So, Dakota, if you want to take over. Perfect. And let me do we minimize? Um, let yeah. me get over back there for you. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So, then when we look at Activate and the, the write back, if I, what I'll need to do is since I already have this up, I can hit refresh and it's going to bring that information technically already in the database. I just, uh, I just already had the order up. Now, a couple of things that I'll point out. Um, first off, if we just want to look at that information that's already there before we get to the invoice of an order, you can look under the packages tab on a sales order. 
that's going to show us in, in this example that, that Simon processed, he actually created two different shipments um, uh, for this one order. So you can actually see there's two lines here, have two different tracking numbers, uh, different weight, different charges. Uh, well, it's actually the same charge, but two different uh, charges um, for this order. Um, so you do have access to that information directly on screen. Now, we also have this information. It'll actually show us during the invoicing process. Um, if I want to review it, if it's important for me to be reviewing that information every time we create an invoice, then you can definitely one-off look at each invoice as we process them. So if I hit create invoice, you're going to be able to see that information here on the invoice screen and uh, the creation screen. So when we look at this, you'd see uh, the the shipment tracking information again, um, and um, and then this is ready to be processed. Now you can also accept payment as a part of our invoicing process. You can even identify if the account has credits. We do pull that information over from QuickBooks. You can apply them at this point, and then even charge a credit card uh, over the balance, whatever's remaining. So that that can all be done here as well. Uh, one other thing that I'll point out here is that return invoice. Now, you can set up templates for emails. You can have one be a default for invoices. And then whenever, if, if we wanted to in configuration, you can set this up to be an auto check. So it automatically, all you have to do is hit send or invoice, and it's going to send an email um, out to um, uh, George Adams, who is the email in this example. Um, so that does auto populate. It will attach that invoice as a PDF. And, and that way that can help automate that step. Now, this right here is creating invoices one at a time. Again, I've, uh, you know, I think a lot of what we're trying to discuss is how do we automate some of those things? How do we do things in batch too? Um, and so invoicing one at a time sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. So if we were to want to look at doing this in batch, I may come back over here and you'll notice this order is no longer under picked. That's because we processed it and on that return, the uh, workflow status update now shifts it to shipped. So A1537C, it's still checked. Um, that is that order uh, that we uh, just processed. And so now it's under that shift. And, and this kind of, again, gets into the different um, filters that we're looking at for these buttons so that you can quickly understand, okay, what are my orders that I've already shipped today? What can I actually get to that invoicing stage? And of course, we could check off more orders here. If I if I start checking them off, um, I can then go into um, actions here again, and I can prepare invoices. So this would be more batch step of processing those invoices. So you can see that that order is here. If I had 10, 100 orders that all needed to be invoiced because I fulfilled 100 or even 1,000 orders today, um, now in one step I can invoice them all. So I can actually prepare those. Now you'll see the information here is also populated. So shipping date, shipping charge. Um, and, and so that, that is visible there if you just wanna make sure did it actually get that information back if that was a part of this process. So I can go ahead and I'll prepare this. Uh, so it'll do the same function as what I did on the sales order when I actually hit create invoice. And um, so it's invoiced now. So we can close this. And now um, you'll notice it drops down to 16 again on ship. That's because I invoice it, so it's no longer there. Now, I may be able to see it under change today. I don't have a filter for invoiced. I could have a filter if I wanted to, if I wanted to see all the ones I've invoiced today. Definitely something you could do if you wanna see that in, in these buttons. Um, but um, I can also go back and I can see that these order this order is completed. So the status is completed at this point um, and, um, and we're, we're actually done with this. The, the next step here is of course getting that into QuickBooks because from an operational standpoint, you're done with the order. There is nothing else that you need to do against this order at this point. The, the last thing you need is just to reconcile that within QuickBooks. So that is where we would actually get into our QuickBooks sync. Uh, now I, I'm just going to simulate what this looks like. Uh, we, we're not gonna actually demonstrate QuickBooks in this example, uh, but I do want you to see how easy that step is. So if I actually hit synchronize with QuickBooks, that's gonna pop up our synchronization uh, window and then you can hit start sync. And what that does is it'll do an authentication to QuickBooks to make sure whoever is doing that sync has the authority to update that part of QuickBooks. So there's a reason why we do it manually and make sure that that information is done properly. Um, and if you've had experience with those systems integrating with QuickBooks, a lot of times if there's an automation, it can lead to errors and then you don't know about it for a while. Um, this is designed to help mitigate any, uh, any kind of errors uh, and, and um, of course, uh, make that a little bit simpler. So start that sync. Most syncs take, you know, if you're doing it on a daily basis, 
Um, it might be a couple of minutes, depending on the volume of invoices, uh, volume of transactions you're posting on a daily basis, it'll vary, but it, it is typically very quick. And then once that's done, that invoice would be in, within QuickBooks and accessible um, in its corresponding area. If it's, if it's still an open invoice without payment, as this one would be, uh, then it's going to be under accounts receivable as it relates to that specific customer. It would also be available under their customer record within QuickBooks. All right. I guess that's, that's really the workflow there for... Um, the shift of this order from Activate when we originally created it into Starship and then back into Activate. Um, so I guess, uh, Simon or Caroline, do we want to open it up for questions at this point? Or do we want to actually, I think we said we wanted to do a poll, correct? Sorry, yeah, I was on be... mute there. <laughs> I was trying to talk to you guys, but that wasn't working very well. So yeah, I just have one poll. I just want to, um, I'm going to launch it now. And if any, everybody that's um, attending, if you could just let us know if you're interested in learning about either one of these solutions, either um, Activate Inventory Management or Starship with the Integrated Shipping. And while we are getting um, the polls coming in, I thought maybe we could go through some of the questions um, that we had. Sure. So first question here, I'm shipping with ABF. Um, and how do I import my tariffs into Starship to do that rate shop? <clears throat> so Starship um, does work with ABF rate. Um, all we would ask you for is your account credentials um, and any time that you make any changes to your tariff, those would be updated live. Um, so there's no um, need to update a tariff with Starship. It's just done live based on your account credentials. So once you uh, purchase the module, uh, through um, V Technologies, we'll access your account credentials and you'll be all set moving forward. Awesome. Thank you, Simon. Um, Dakota, I have a question that um, is for you. Can Activate handle lot numbers? Yes. So um, Activate does do lot tracking. In fact, we're a very popular solution for a lot of uh, perishable good companies, especially in the food and beverage industry. But of course, it does extend beyond that if we get into medical or pharmaceutical. Um, when we are wanting to track that lot from the time we receive it to the time it's actually delivered to a customer. And of course, Activate also offers a traceability feature. So when you are talking about um, maybe being a part of any sort of preparation for recall. Of course, we never want to deal with recalls, but in the event that something like that does occur, having um, the ability to quickly pull together that information and activate, that's done in minutes, um, which is something that it can be very important as a part of any FDA regulations. So it would give you full traceability of all transactions while it was in your possession from the time you received it from that specific vendor to the time you delivered it to a specific customer. And of course, you can create an incident report with an Activate to track that process as you are dealing with that uh, recall. Awesome. Thank you, Dakota. Um, Simon, I think this one's for you. Do published rates show? <clears throat> Uh, published rates are going to show uh, for parcel carriers only. Um, for LTL, we do not show published rates just due to the um, highly incentivized rates that people do receive. But for published rates, you do have visibility on what those would look like. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Dakota, I have one for you. We receive payment before starting orders. Is this possible with Activate? Yes, so there's a couple of ways we can handle accepting payments. Um, of course, you can accept a payment. Um, sometimes we refer to that as a deposit. Um, it's uh, the, two different ways you handle that. If it's something that you uh, could do an authorization and then collection at shipment, that is an option through different processors like, you know, let's say for authorize.net. They allow us to um, uh, process a an authorization at the time you accept the order. It could even be authorized at an e-commerce level and then collected and activate. Um, activate does have a few other workflows for managing uh, the acceptance of a payment. If it's a deposit or if it's in full, um, it's just a matter of how we handle the scheduling of lines on a sales order. You'd still create an invoice against that initial payment. And of course, uh, upon invoicing the completed order, you can apply that and, and reconcile that at that point in time. Awesome. Thank you. 
Um, another question to maybe both of you, were the weights and measurements entered into Activate or Starship? The, uh, it's, it, actually, I'm sure we'll both answer this. Um, I'll mention it. Um, we can identify weight at an order level and activate. So if, if that is something that um, works in the transfer information, we can do that. And, and then Simon, I'll let you speak to maybe line level weight um, tracking. Yeah, and we can associate a weight to a specific line item. Um, inside of Starship and then have that saved inside the uh, data, the inventory database. Um, so based on that, you know, we'll basically calculate the amount of, you know, the total weight of all the line items that would basically have a cumulative weight in your package. So <clears throat> that's how your total weight would be determined. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll, um, I'll also make one more point there, too. When we are processing, especially when it comes to EDI, if we process it through our packaging manager inside of Activate, um, we would also identify weight at that point, and then that weight, as it relates to that specific package as a part of a shipment, that would also be uh, delivered into Starship from Activate. Um, so there wouldn't, I mean, it, I mean, obviously based on what both Simon and I are saying, there, there's multiple ways that information is tracked so that you're not having to do that manually, uh, if possible. Awesome. Thank you. Um, does Activate integrate with any sales tax calculation platforms? It does. We work with Avitax, uh, Avalara. Um, Avitax is the product. Um, I'm sure if, if you've had any, um, if you've done any due diligence, I'm sure Avalara is typically the name that pops up. They've been around for a long time um, and um, they're very popular. And, and of course, we have a, a full integration with their platform um, for tax calculation uh, certificates and um, uh, different um, uh, things like that as it relates to um, tax tracking. Perfect, thank you. Um, this one's for Simon. We charge published rates to certain customers. How do we see them in the demo? They were not there. <clears throat> so the published rates are, there's a tab um, associated called charges. Um, they'd be listed there as your published rates. You also in the rate shop have the ability um, to basically show, um, display your published charges versus your contracted charges. Um, so that's another way you can view them. Um, if you wanted that written back into Activate to have published versus negotiated, we can do that as well and show your published rates versus your negotiated rates inside of Activate and have that on the right back. Perfect, thank you. Um, another question, can we print an end of day with all detailed charges? I'm thinking this is for you, Simon. Yes. Um, so, and then, so we do have access, um, and we can take this offline. We do have access to a dashboard, um, which has a bunch of different reporting um, options in which we'll have a report detailing your total shipments for the day, along with who you shipped it to, uh, to total charges. Um, so that's one way. And then we do also have like a typical end of day for UPS, FedEx, um, that will display all of the associated shipments that you've done for those specific carriers. Um, but we can definitely take that offline and kind of go through the dashboard in more detail to show you uh, specifics of those reports. Perfect. Thank you. And um, let's see. That was Robert. Robert, yeah, definitely will be reaching out to you independently. So get all those questions answered. Um, Dakota, I think this one is for you. Is there a way to import paid invoices from QuickBooks into Activate to start the process? From QuickBooks into Activate, was that correct? Yes, that's the question. Yes, okay, so uh, upon initially setting up Activate, uh, we do a, a migration of data from QuickBooks into Activate. That does um, include uh, historical invoices. Um, so as long as those invoices are within QuickBooks, they will also be brought over into Activate. Perfect. Thank you. And thanks everybody for your questions. Keep sending them in. We'll try to get to all of those. We still have a couple minutes left here. Um, this is a question um, maybe for both of you. Does Starship auto select the shipping box size? Let's start with Simon on that one. 
the Starship auto select the shipping box size. Um, so there's a couple. <clears throat> so there's a couple of workflows that Dakota mentioned earlier. Um, you know, one being if we're utilizing the packaging manager um, inside of Activate and bringing that as a shipment in, um, <clears throat> that would be brought in with the appropriate packaging um, packaging type, I should say. Um, the order demonstration we went through today, you can have it default to a specific packaging type that you may choose, um, but it's not going to auto select um, unless if it's, um, you know, we could use a packaging scenario if it's a like similar item um, where we can kind of default it to a specific packaging. But again, we'll have to maybe kind of talk a little bit further offline on that one to see exactly what you're looking to do there. Awesome, thanks. Thanks, John, for your question. We'll reach out to you on that one. Um, is it possible to manage packing lists for kits with moving parts slash lot numbers, i.e. move one part from one kit to another kit? I think that might be Dakota. Yeah, um, that might be a question we'd probably have to talk about offline. I think there, I, I think we would need a little bit more information, maybe specifically about, um, you know, how you're doing that. Activate does handle kits. Um, we, uh, we, our terminology is a little bit different than than QuickBooks when we talk about assemblies versus kits. So there's definitely some options on how we can configure that, uh, how we um, can select those sub items, and then how they are represented on documents and and a part of a workflow as it relates to fulfillment. Uh, so, but but a, a more detailed uh, conversation offline might be better to answer that question more completely. Awesome, thank you, Kristen. Thanks for your question. We'll reach out to you. Um, another question for you, Dakota, how do you change an item price on a PO within Activate once that item has been received? Um, I, um, if we're talking about a, on, from a purchasing standpoint, um, so with Activate, we have um, what we call COGS roll forward. Uh, essentially, that is where you may receive an item off of a purchase order um, and you may in you may actually give a sort of a, a hold price or whatever was the expected price of that item when the invoice origin uh, eventually is received. And of course, we know invoices can take um, days to weeks before they're ever received um, from a purchasing standpoint. We uh, um, so whenever you do get that, if it does deviate from the original expectation, you identify that on the invoice inside of Activate. We call a uh, purchase order invoice. Um, uh, and then turns into a bill when it goes into QuickBooks, but you can identify that change on that invoice. That will take precedence over the original receipt. We go back to the date of the receipt. We change. We make that change at that point in time, and then the cogs roll forward. Actually, move, it rolls forward. So as it as it kind of sounds, it rolls forward to all transactions that would have been affected by that change. It adjusts those costs as as they would need to be adjusted, um, and and that way, regardless of how far that product has made it, even if it's already been sold or if it's gone through a manufacturing process and it's now a new product and then it's sold and even if that invoice is in QuickBooks we will still do that COGS roll forward to affect those transactions if it's something that we need to update within QuickBooks that will go into QuickBooks and adjust those transactions as well um, and um, the, the only stipulation to that change is if you have if your prior period is closed um, and um, and then of course we would just uh, post that to um, uh, a, uh, a specific account on uh, usually the day outside of that um, that close period. Okay, awesome. I have one other question. I think this might be for Dakota. Can you specify if the invoice will include the shipping charge on it? Yes, it will. So when we um, when we create that invoice, those line items uh, for the shipping charges, where they become light items on that invoice, um, and uh, so that would be something that they would be able to see on that invoice um, uh, when we deliver it to them, when we create that as a part of the email. Uh, it, also, when we deliver it into QuickBooks, that would be a line item as a um, uh, specific. And now there is some configuration options there. We do have some billing options uh, as it as it relates to our integration with Starship. So if you're if you're not wanting that to go there, we can. There are some uh, alternate options, but that is typically the the standard configuration. Awesome. Thank you. Um, do you need QuickBooks Enterprise to use Activate? No. 
So Activate does support Pro, Premier, and Enterprise, and Activate's feature set is, um, is the same. So there's not really any, um, you don't lose anything from a standpoint of Activate, um, if you, depending on which version of QuickBooks. The only limitations would be on the QuickBooks side. Of course, Pro and Premier do have limitations on database sizes for customers and transactions. Um, so there are things to consider there. And of course, Activate is still updating transactions such as the invoice um, and the bill on the sales and purchasing sides respectively, as well as uh, journal entry. So there are things to factor in there. If you do have high volume, you may eventually need to, at a financial level, uh, move to enterprise, but uh, it's not required. Awesome, thank you. Um, Simon, this one's for you. We ship from both Canada to Canada and US to US. Does Starship work with Purolator, FedEx Canada, and UPS Canada? <clears throat> So we work with FedEx and UPS in both the U.S. and Canada. Um, PureLater, we right now do not work with PureLater in Canada. So the only supported carriers would be FedEx and UPS in Canada at the moment. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I think this is from for you, Dakota, um, the question about QuickBooks Enterprise working with Activate, um, and is it compatible with QBO? So at the moment, it's not. Um, so at, currently, we are only working with the desktop application of QuickBooks, so Pro, Premier, and Enterprise. Okay, awesome. Um, I think this one's for Simon. Do you support FedEx and UPS in Mexico? No. Um, that would No, we do not support anything in Mexico at the moment. definitely support shipping to Mexico, but not from Mexico. Right. Okay, I think, oh yes, he said, sorry, shipping to Mexico. Oh, yes, to Mexico, yes. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. Um, okay, it looks like we have gone through all the questions and I appreciate everybody staying on the line. 80% have voted, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out the poll. We'll definitely be reaching out to everybody um, you know, who said that they had interest in the um, applications. And as um, an ending here, we do have the contact information for both Simon and Dakota on, on the uh, screen now. And we will um, take a look at those and make sure we get back to you for those that we said we'd go um, offline on a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Simon, Dakota, any last words? No, I, I would just say, you know, thank you everyone for joining today. Um, Dakota, thank you and the team from the Activate side, and we're definitely excited, you know, for this partnership. And um, But I think this, um, you know, from our, our side of things, you know, if there's anything you know, on the shipping side uh, from any of the carriers or if you have any questions regarding what Starship can do or how it can benefit you, please don't hesitate to reach out. And I'll reach out to those who uh, said they were interested in moving forward. So. Uh, thank you again, and Dakota, any words? Yeah, I don't think I could have said any better, Simon. Um, exactly the same thing from us. And if you have more questions about Activate, if you want to learn more, if you want to see a demonstration, uh, we can definitely uh, answer those questions and set up those time uh, with you or your team uh, to walk through Activate. And of course, um, you know, we are we here, Alterity, uh, are, are uh, obviously very excited about working with V Technologies. Uh, and activate Starship um, solution is uh, actually, it's actually covers a, a lot of um, areas that um, we really have maybe had some gaps in the past. And so uh, very excited about this partnership and, and definitely look forward to helping clients um, kind of fill in some holes that, that both of our solutions together can, can solve. Awesome, thank you, Simon. Thank you, Dakota. Talk to everybody later. Thank you. Thank you.